You won't believe these infuriating habits. Photographers reveal their ultimate frustrations. Get ready for the top cringeworthy moments that really drive pros crazy. All right, hey everybody, today we're taking a break from technical reviews and we're gonna be talking to you about pet peeves. It's high frame rates. Gatekeeping. It's surgically sharp photos. From other photographers and videographers. So I hit up a few of my friends. We have a weekly call uh, and we talk about making camera videos for you. We get advice, we like, we're like, what will they like? Uh, and we, we commiserate. But I asked them, tell me your biggest pet peeve about photo rules or video rules or things that supposedly, supposedly, supposedly you have to do. This video is what we hate about the camera world we live in. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. All right, our first pet peeve, our first rule that we don't like is from Omar who says, do photos really have to be sharp? Does video have to be absolutely sharp? In the camera world and in the review space, people go crazy about this is a sharp lens. But is that what matters most? Listen to Omar, take it away, Omar. Hey Wes, thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, air my grievances on your channel with your followers. And I wanna say that I'm gonna give you two grievances I have since I do a ton of photo and video. The first grievance is in photography and it's this obsession with ultra tack sharp, like surgically sharp photos. Not only has the obsession gone a little too far recently, especially with this new generation of cameras with 40 megapixels and lenses that are so sharp that you can see people's pores without a macro lens. The obsession with images being sharp really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Historically, some of the best photos people have ever taken are also not tack sharp unless they're in the studio setting. And while I understand the technical specs of like looking at center sharpness versus corner sharpness for certain types of photographers, I feel like the majority of people are not looking towards like this part of the photo here. So that kind of doesn't matter, but that's a personal opinion. That's like for landscape photographers and architectural photographers maybe, but for the majority of people who are taking photos of everyday life or of the people in their life. And to really drive this point home, people need to remember that there's a whole industry centered around softening an image. Haze filters and black pro mist filters are the most common ones, but there are about four other different types of filters that are designed specifically just to soften people's skin and to soften the overall image. The average kit lens is sharp enough nowadays, and 40 years ago, even mid-range glass was still pretty dang sharp. So that's my first grievance. Thanks Omar for breaking that down, but we're not done with Omar yet. We're gonna go back to him later about do videos have to be shot and log footage to be professional. But right now, let's take it to Jared, who's gonna talk to us about gatekeepers and the gatekeeping philosophy that is toxic in the photo and video world. Take it away, Jared. What's going on, Wes? I'm doing this old school. This is just using my phone, no mics, nothing. And the reason why, it relates to the topic at hand, which is what annoys me or what's my pet peeve. One of them has to be gatekeeping in the world of photography, the photography uh, discourse that's out there online. I hate when people can't stand it. When people try to say that there's a gate that they have to open up, some kind of lock and they own the lock. They know what the lock is. And that lock is either like a camera brand or you have to be this type of diver. You have to do this type of thing. And I know that for me personally, a lot of times when I'm doing videos, one of the things that holds me back is that perception, that thought that somebody out there might be thinking, uh, you know, that I'm kind of some kind of a, uh, you know, a joker or uh, that I don't know what I'm doing just because I'm using a cell phone. And uh, honestly, like, who cares? And that's the whole thing. Like, let's just tell stories, be kind, have fun, take great photographs and promote and champion each other instead of uh, having any kind of restrictions and and, uh, you know, gates that we're locking so nobody else can come in. So that's my pet peeve. Wes, sorry for the shaky cam. Thanks, Jared. You always bring some uh, heart and humanity and humility and humor into your uh, commentary. I thank you for that. And um, by the way, all these people have YouTube channels. Check them out, follow them, subscribe, whatever it is. Support them. They're the absolute best. Uh, now we're going to jump into Goffey's commentary on shutter speed in video. People, anyways, I'll let him explain his pet peeve or the rule that he hates. Take it away, Goffey. 
Hi Wes, one of the rules that I don't like when it comes to photography and videography, this is more for video, is the 180 shutter rule, where you should have your shutter speed twice your frame rate. Now don't get me wrong, if you're shooting a Hollywood movie, then definitely stick to it, but if you're making YouTube videos, treat it more as a guidance than a rule. If you can have your shutter speed at twice your frame rate, go for it, but if for some reason there is a shot that you really need, let's say it's a bright sunny day, and you need to move up from 1 48th of a second, do it. Don't worry about it, no one's going to know, no one's going to tell, especially on a YouTube video. A lot of my videos are actually recorded on a DJI Pocket 3 set to auto shutter and not one person has ever commented on my video and said, what are you doing with your shutter speed in video, it looks terrible. Rules in photography and videography are there to be broken and I kind of hate the fact that we refer to them as rules. Anything that's a rule should just be treated as guidance. That's my little rant. If you're going to get a better shot by using a faster shutter speed than double your frame rate, just go for it, because nobody's ever going to tell. Perfect. Thank you, man. You are the best. I always appreciate your accent. I mean, your uh, across the pond attitude and convictions. Uh, by the way, Goffy has one of the best channels out there for just logical, information packed, tight perspective, highly analytical. I could go on and on. Go check out his channel. And right now we're going to turn to Hunter, who talks about, I honestly, this was not in my frame of reference. He said, photographers who shoot in burst mode unnecessarily. He's gonna take it away. Let it rip, Hunter. Testing, testing. Hey, Wes, thank you so much for this question. I actually have two things that kind of bother me um, within the photography industry, I guess. And one of them is high frame rates that don't make any sense in certain scenarios. Like if I'm taking portraits of somebody and it's not a fast moving situation or shooting landscapes or anything that's not high end sports, high end fashion or wildlife, I don't think you should ever hear somebody shooting at a ridiculous frame rate. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I think that shows that you're a beginner and you don't really know what you need in a camera. The second thing is people that only shoot wide open. And whenever I do gear reviews on my channel, of course you want to see the production of what the wide open aperture is going to look like on that lens. But also the most important things that you need to know about photography is framing, layering, composition and lighting. And once you get all those things together, your aperture doesn't have to be at 1.4 anymore. You can shoot it at F8 and your image should look great. Once you get away from that crutch of a wide open aperture, your life begins to get a lot more visually appealing in my opinion. So that is one thing that also bothers me. So I really think those two things show that somebody hasn't been shooting for a long time and they're just now getting into it. So if you're one of those people, just kind of broaden your horizon a little bit. You don't have to shoot fast or fast either way. So uh, yeah, thanks for the questions. I hope I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. Back to home. Second one, as a video guy, is people who say those who don't shoot in log profiles are not professionals. This is another one of those weird elitist arguments people have when they've been spending a little too much time in a space. And my first takeaway is that if you're a professional, it means you get paid for your work. Now, as far as technical competency goes, if you're shooting video, you absolutely should know how to set exposure, how to compose, how to do contrast through lighting, which you might actually be doing it subconsciously, even if you don't know that you're purposely doing it. Because for years and years and years prior, you were subjected to whatever the camera's color profile was. There was no log in the past. Also, outside of maybe product videography, the obsession with dynamic range, it just goes a little too far in the amateur space. Because in the professional space, I'll tell you right now, most people don't actually care. They'll shoot in the log profile, they'll send it out to a colorist, and then they'll be done with it. And even this video I'm sending you right now, I'm shooting it in real ace. I don't really have a reason to shoot it in log and then put it in my timeline and then toss a conversion LUT on and make my tiny little adjustments. The color profile looks really good and I'm just going to roll with it. I've also been a professional production artist for the last 10 years and if anyone has a problem with that, take it up with my clients. Lastly me now what do i complain about it's the old rule that iso 100 is the only iso you should use yes we get it it came from film actually iso 100 i don't even know if it has a real correlation to what the film process was you bought film iso 100 is what it was so you set your camera settings accordingly but in the digital world does it even make the same sort of correlation People say that it does, and people say you really have to stick to ISO 100. 
And so with these modern miracles that we were walking around with these mirrorless cameras, you really have so much flexibility to be artistic and to create content and don't be stuck on that rule. The camera is way more powerful than the film days. Just push it and try it and see. Sometimes when I'm doing event photography and I'm stuck in a low light situation, the only tool I have is cranking that ISO. So don't just be chained to 100 ISO. All right, those are some pretty crazy takes, right? These are my friends who said what they hate about the rules that we put on each other, the constraints. And so, you know, it's good to know everybody has um, some things they don't really share with their YouTube community. We don't always go on these rants, but it's also kind of fun to see what they really think off their channel. So I want to thank Jared and Hunter and Omar and Goffey. Thank you guys for uh, chipping in and making this video possible. Peace. If you like this video, subscribe, and we'll be back with more camera tutorials and reviews in the next video. That's it, man. We just tried to let you know how we see it, like keeping it real.